It's got great traction and people seem to love it, but when you look into it, it's not all it's cracked up to be. La Roche-Posay's Ethical Duo has a lot of haters from what I can see from doctors all around the world and I understand why. It does have ingredients like niacinamide, which has numerous benefits for skin, such as minimizing oils if you have oily skin. It also has LHA, which is a lipohydroxy acid, to help exfoliate the skin, and was actually developed by L'Oreal in the 1980s, I think. And it also has a linoleic acid, which can do things like help the skin barrier and provide an antioxidant function. That's all great, but isn't that a bit of an odd combination of things to put together? Why would you have something to help the skin barrier and also something that removes the skin cells at the same time? Surely those functions are best to be done separately so that they don't, bleh, so that they don't interfere with each other. This is where the bullshit starts. On La Roche's own website, it says in the description, 9 out of 10 dermatologists would recommend La Roche-Posay Effaclar for oily, blemish-prone skin. But then, when you dig deeper to see how many dermatologists were surveyed for that statistic, you find out that it's literally just 249. Now, I don't know about you, but I think the number of dermatologists globally is probably quite a big number that's significantly bigger than 249. So you make your own mind up as to whether asking 250 people is enough to speak on behalf of all dermatologists in the entire world. But wait, the bullshit carries on. When you read further, you see that those 249 dermatologists were asked while at an event sponsored by La Roche-Posay seven years ago at the time of making this video. Bullshit. Of course, people are gonna say nice things when you sponsor an event for them. What do you expect? Even if 249 is a good number and it wasn't at a sponsored event, how many of those clinicians from seven years ago would still recommend the same product, knowing that research is constantly evolving with new findings coming out all the time? My guess is zero. Another piece of marketing bullshit is where they say, La Roche-Posay is the number one dermatologist recommended brand in the UK, right? So you've asked all dermatologists in the country which is their most recommended brand, have you? Bullshit. Let's look at that claim in detail. The number that were actually asked was about 600. Is that every dermatologist in the UK? I don't think so. And even then, when you look at the survey itself and the sections of it which show whether dermatologists use La Roche-Posay for certain skin conditions, they admit that the statistics aren't even validated. Bullshit. I could keep going on about this claim because there's even more, but we will move on. They even say that it's hypoallergenic. Bullshit. What the hell does that word even mean? The FDA itself says there are no federal standards or definitions that govern the use of the term hypoallergenic. The term means whatever a company the term means whatever a company wants it to mean. In other words, every company secretly knows that consumers like yourself watching this video think the word hypoallergenic means that the product has some sort of benefit or advantage, and they let you think that by using it in their marketing, while knowing full well behind the scenes that actually it's complete bullshit. And if you don't believe me, there's actual scientific evidence for it. A study in 2017 looked at all the moisturizers sold by major online retailers like Amazon and found that 83% of those products marked as hypoallergenic actually contained at least one potentially allergenic chemical. Now, try and convince me that that's not the definition of hypocrisy lies and of course, bullshit. Moving on to the ingredients, there's quite a lot in it and this video would probably be about two hours long if I went through every single one. So I'm gonna focus on just two specific ones that caught my attention and should catch yours too. The first is fragrance. Well, what the hell is that? Which fragrance? Which chemicals have you used for it? How do I know there isn't something in it that I'm allergic to? Frankly, I have no idea. Now, if your doctor gave you a drug to take but they couldn't tell you what was in it or whether you'd be allergic to it or not, would you take that drug? I don't think so. So what do I think of La Roche putting fragrance in it for starters and then not even saying what that is? Bullshit. And as if that wasn't enough, it has ammonium polyacrylyl dimethyl taurate, also known as APT. I'm gonna quote for you here. The EPA classifies APT as a probable human carcinogen. 
There are also environmental concerns about the potential toxicity of APT when it's released into the environment. If you didn't know already, a carcinogen is a substance that can cause cancer. APT is a substance used to thicken grease and make it non-stick. It's also used to manufacture things like lubricants, detergents, paints, adhesives. It can cause skin and eye irritation. So you've got a skincare product with skin irritant in it. Bullshit. Knowing all that I've said so far in this video, and trust me, I could say so much more, would I ever consider using Effacloud Duo or any other skincare or any other skincare brand with so much bullshit in it? Never in a million years. If you are genuinely serious about improving your skin with top quality skincare, then what you need to understand is that the most important ingredient when it comes to your skin health, arguably, is vitamin A. The strongest version of this that you can use is called retinoic acid. And it's absolutely incredible in its ability to give you the best skin of your life. It's used very commonly to cure acne, but you can use it if you don't have acne too. It's best to understand how it works, how to get it, and more importantly, how to use it by checking out this video here.